Welcome back everybody, Hi Tech Lab here. I'm super excited this morning because I have my solar panels totally reconfigured. Currently I have all 48 panels connected up on these ground mount racks and they are set up quite nice. So I started out by digging a giant trench all the way over to where my solar panels are set up and that goes to a post you can kind of see in the background and here it is, here are all of my solar panels and you can see with my combiner box in the middle, this is a pretty awesome setup. Uh, conveniently here in the morning, I am not shading this with my giant shadow, but yeah, these panels are working fantastic. I had them running yesterday and I generated 50 kilowatt hours of power. So it was quite impressive how much they've been able to produce. And we're gonna have a hot week this week here in California. So it'll be a great test running all the air conditioning to see how well these perform. Conveniently, I'm well set up with utilities such as water, so washing these solar panels yesterday was really quite easy. I just drug out a 100 foot hose and used the pressure washer and a squeegee, and cleaning these was absolutely the easiest thing since sliced bread. I still have my server rack set up here in the middle with my two eco-worthy PV combiner boxes that then go into a pull box in the bottom back to my electrical room, and all six circuits of both combiner boxes are totally filled up and there are four panels per circuit. So I'm running right around 140 to 150 volts, which is right around the max voltage the Outback controllers can accept, which is great because then over the distance back to my electrical room, I don't have a terrible amount of voltage drop. If you haven't seen inside these PV combiner boxes, I made a unboxing and a very detailed video talking about the inside guts of these. And despite my initial thoughts that they weren't gonna work very well, they actually are quite nice. And I have two of them and I actually do plan to have a couple more. Uh, based on our air conditioning loads, there's a good chance we may need more solar panels. And I think I may do another setup with more of these combiner boxes in the near future. My reasoning for facing some of the panels to the east and some to the west are simply the fact that right now, early in the morning, we catch the first sun. If we were facing south right now, we would actually probably be shaded. Uh, just because of the simple fact of the angle of the panels and where the sun comes from. And then in the evening when the sun's over to the, it's almost to the northwest, it's very interesting. Uh, we really wouldn't be able to capture much more power after about four or five o'clock to run air conditioning. And as you can imagine in summer in California, it gets pretty toasty. So having that air conditioning power peter out at five o'clock would kind of suck. All of these panels are connected on two of my Outback charge controllers in my off-grid electrical room. I'll show you guys those here in a minute, but those handle quite a bit of power and I have them connected online. I now have internet out here on the ranch so I can use Optics RE online and monitor the generation. Although I wish I could see that in my PLC as compared to inside the proprietary Outback software. So these are my two Outback FlexMax charge controllers that those panels feed into. And I actually have half of the panels that faced east on one charge controller, along with half of the panels that faced west, and those are combined in the combiner box. And then I have the other half of the east facing panels, along with the second half of the west facing panels on the second charge controller. So that's really nice because in, in the morning when the sun's shining on the east, I have the full 80 amps capacity of this to the east. And then in the evening, I have the 80 amps capacity to the west. So even though the total amount of solar connected may be a little bit more than the 80 amps it's rated for, it doesn't matter because the fact that some of the panels facing east and some of them facing west, they're not gonna be all operating at once. So it still stays within its 80 amps ability, which is pretty awesome. And then eventually my plan is to have a third, fourth, fifth, and sixth Outback charge controller over here. And I'll run all those to like a DC panel board to combine all of it before it goes to the batteries. But that may need to be coming in the future depending on how much our loads increase here at the ranch. I know you guys may be thinking it's overkill, but yesterday we had both of these charge controllers running pretty darn hard. And like I mentioned earlier, we generated 50 kilowatt hours of power and I'm very happy with it. We stayed pretty cool even though it was in the, uh, it was almost 100 degrees. And today we're gonna have another 100 degree day. So it'll really be a great test of the system to see how well we can keep cool. 
But yeah, we've already generated one kilowatt hour here and 0.9 kilowatt hours on this one. So for pretty early in the day, we've already generated a substantial amount of power and we have 1,280 watts coming in here and 1,230 watts coming in on this other one. So definitely have the power going in and that has me excited. So got everything smooth in nicely with the tractor and that was my goal with this whole thing was to make it so that there were no wires to drive over and you can kind of see the RV in the background. It's already been tested. Uh, we went out for Memorial Day weekend out to the desert and had some fun. What is all this for you may ask? I have sitting here my four sample Calb CA180 batteries and my plan is to replace this battery bank back here made up of 16 CA100 batteries with 64 of these CA180s and I'm pretty excited for that and I found a genuine seller out of China and I'm going to be importing 256 of these and the ones that I don't use and that my friends don't use will be available for sale. So if you're interested in buying some of these batteries, you can email me at sales.hitechlab at gmail.com. But besides that, I have a bunch of videos with these batteries coming soon and I'll show you guys the full installation process for removing these other batteries and upgrading the system to the CA180s. And my favorite part about these batteries is that they overperform their specifications pretty substantially and I'm just very excited for that. So if you guys want to see that, be sure to subscribe to the channel, turn on the bell icon. Other than that guys, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Leave your comments down below and have a great day. Bye now.